Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be covering setting up the Synology Cloud uh, Syncs package uh, which enables you to back up uh, and sync data between numerous cloud services that are already existing on the internet to kind of bridge your private cloud with the public cloud. You can use this to uh, have encrypted backups on like Amazon's S3 service or even utilize uh, OneDrive uh, to or Dropbox as a kind of off-site backup uh, in the cloud. You can encrypt that data in your backups. So I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, cloud sync up real quick. So first thing you're going to do is hit your icon. If you don't have the package center on your desktop, you can get here and get to all the applications that you have installed. I'm going to go ahead and go to the package center. Real quick, I'm going to go to settings and just double check that I have auto updates automatically installed. So update packages automatically and have all packages. Uh, that's just a best practice I highly recommend. Uh, and then you're going to go to backups. There you'll see Synology Cloud Sync. And uh, we'll get to the Cloud Station server later. The Cloud Station server is essentially setting up your own Dropbox uh, or OneDrive or Google Drive type account uh, or type you know service where the Cloud Sync kind of integrates with already existing kind of the same similar uh, ideal, but just like the cloud sync sets integrates with already existing services where the cloud station is setting up your own server service. So let's go ahead and install this. Uh, it's not a huge application, so it should download pretty quickly. Uh, you'll see that it's downloading, and then you'll have a new application on your uh, home screen here in a second after it gets done installing. So it'll appear here. You can see like kind of a little spotlight there for a second showing that it was. A new application and then when, upon launching you will be able to integrate uh, with a ton of other cloud providers so I'm just gonna go through these real quick and kind of name off some of the big guys out there so you have Dropbox Google Drive OneDrive and Amazon Drive which are some of the you know the big huge uh, public cl cloud providers out there where you can store your device there's box of course uh, s3 is very handy that lets you back up to s3 uh, a a Amazon's AWS s3 uh, buckets essentially uh, and then there's a similar thing with Azure and Google with their uh, cloud storage uh, plans there's uh, Blackbase if you use that uh, so there's tons of other things you can see there's Rackspace uh, and that's pretty much the, bi the big ones out there but there's you know you can see that there's integrations with all kinds of different providers out there uh, so depending on who you're wanting to integrate with uh, will kind of dictate kind of what you're trying to actually do here uh, and what your goal is to fulfill. Uh, what I'm going to show is uh, integrating with an Amazon S3 uh, server. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera because you'll have the access keys. But if you've ever used Amazon S3, you'll see that you can have S access keys. And uh, I'll go ahead and create a, a fake bucket to give you the ideal. Um, No, never mind. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and integrate with the S3 uh, storage, which is going to make a bucket. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera uh, because it's going to have the access key and the secret key uh, and the bucket name uh, from my S3 account. But you can see that you can have. Uh, uh, have those integrations and have multiple buckets quite easily set up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I have now have my bucket connected and I'm now ready to proceed. Uh, the reason I chose S3 is because it does on this screen have a couple more options than the, uh, some of the other cloud, cloud providers have. And I figured it would be the best choice to kind of give you a complete kind of walkthrough of how to set up your Cloud Sync uh, setting. So let's go ahead and name our connection. This will be something you always do, regardless of the cloud sync provider. Uh, and that little name will come over here. So maybe it's something intuitive that you know uh, what it is referencing to. I'm going to name this Archive 2017 because I have chosen to link this to a bucket uh, for Archives 2017. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Archives folder. I've already created a subfolder underneath that. Uh, you can uh, link the root folder if you so choose but uh, i'm gonna have a subfolder for 2017 archives uh so uh you can also do the same thing for your remote path if you want to you can create a subfolder 
uh, underneath the root folder and made that just for a year, but I have a bucket directly related just to 2017. Uh, if you wanted to set up something similar to just be whatever, you know, work best for you really. Uh, it doesn't really uh, matter too much. Uh, so now uh, you have a couple of different options with sync direction. Uh, this is available on pretty much all the different services, I believe. Uh, but you can do by directional uh, synchroni synchronization. That'll synchronize the uh, data from your uh, cloud provider to your Synology NAS and vice versa. So that is going both ways. Uh, you can download remote changes only. So if you have a uh, S3 bucket or a Dropbox account that you only want to download files to, uh, for instance, if you have a, a remote location that you don't want modifying your root files, your original files, but want to have access to files, you can do something like that. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is uploading local changes only. So local changes that are made on my Synology NAS will be uploaded to the cloud. Uh, I'm going to be using the infrequent access, uh, the reduced redundancy. I believe that's kind of uh, an older, uh, a older service. Um, I don't think they really promote that anymore. Uh, it's still available as far as I know, but I think it is an older service that they're kind of phasing out and has been replaced with a frequent access storage. Uh, standard storage and infrequent access are both standard S3 bucket uh, options. And you have the Glacier Storage here that they list out. So for something like archives, uh, Glacier Storage is probably a better idea, but I'm going to go ahead and use S3 because it's a little bit easier to use. Uh, and it is a little bit easier to retrieve your data from if you need to. Uh, there is a fee associated with retrieving data from the S3 uh, infrequent access. Uh, so just keep that in mind that you really only want to use that even though it is cheaper up front uh, you really only want to use it for infrequent access um, data types because you will be charged for retrieving that data uh, you can encrypt your data on the cloud which will mean that even if you go to amazon or aws.amazon.com which will lead you to the, the aws console uh, you won't be able to log in and get to your data so if you like, have that on like dropbox for instance your data on dropbox.com will not be readable uh, without going through your Synology device. You have to get to your Synology device to get to it. So if you wanted to synchronize this to Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive so you could access this on the web and your mobile devices, uh, data encryption isn't really what you want. Would you, uh, do, it is good though for backups that you want encrypted and definitely for sensitive data that you want to just have an offsite data backup for your, uh, your data so you have an off-site you know backup just in case your Synology device is lost like in a uh, fire or something along with those lines um, you can enable a server-side encryption which I highly recommend uh, which will still allow you to access your data through the web portals through the various cloud providers but will still make it encrypted on the on the server side so like when it's uh, you know setting idly uh, just always choose that there's no really downside that I've ever found to having that chosen it's just better, a very good best practice I'm also going to utilize the don't remove files in the destination folder when they are removed from the source folder so that means I can delete folders from folders from my Synology archive and they will not be deleted from my AWS S3 bucket so as my storage over here starts to fill up I can actually uh, let's move that up a little because I just realized my webcam is kind of covering it up uh, so as my storage kind of fills up and I get like 98%, I can go through and delete some of my older stuff that's already been uploaded uh, from my archive folder. It'll still be on S3, so I still have it. There is still a data source that still has it. Uh, but if it's something I don't care about as much, I can still delete that. Uh, say it's 2018, and I'm now, I can completely delete, delete the 2017 folder. I can delete this task that I'm making right now for 2017 and make a new one for 2018. That might free up, you know, uh, uh, 500 gigabytes of storage on my Synology NAS that I no longer need and I still have all that stuff on the internet if it's stuff that I don't really care about too much I still have one data source of it uh, that isn't the best you know data and you know data proofing so it's only for stuff you don't really you'd really only want to do that for stuff that you don't care about as much if you want uh, but it, you know Amazon is very good about having redundancy on their part but don't just assume that it'll always be always be there uh, if you only have one source of data, especially with like some of the services like Dropbox and, and OneDrive. Uh, so just keep that in mind, or even with Amazon's Cloud Drive, uh, S3 has been very rock solid, and I've never had any problems with any of the cloud providers 
But just, if you only have one source of data and only one location of data, just keep in mind that there is a possibility that it might disappear in the future. So if you're only going to have one data source, just put that for information that you don't care much as much about. Uh, and that's primarily what I'm going to be using my archive for. It's going to be stuff that I don't need, but it might be nice to have sometime in the future. Uh, but I'm not going to die if I don't have it. Um, so essentially, that's my kind of plan with my archive folder. I'm going to go to the schedule settings. This is a very nice tool. Uh, you can enable this and uh, you either enable or suspend tasks in based on periods of blocks of time. You can do entire columns uh, or rows uh, to always have this disabled or enabled during a certain period of time. Or you can choose to suspend tasks during a certain period of time. So if you want to do Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, which is 1,700 hours, you could disable that block so that this task is not running during working hours. For instance, if you're setting this up with a small business. So there's a bunch of different uh, options here you can have it set. Uh, if you primarily are gone during the day and no one else is at your house uh, during the day, you can have this run all day long, you know, and then suspend it. You know, maybe you get home at you know around six and you're only computer till around midnight or so. You can have that suspended all evening. So like while you're watching Netflix or gaming or working on your projects, your internet in, in it won't be impacted uh, during that time because you won't be synchronizing with the cloud and then it'll be running while you're at work or sleeping. Uh, so you have a ton, ton of different options there. I'm just gonna go ahead and disable this uh, or yeah, disable it for at this point, point in time. You can get back to this in a second. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this. You can kind of review your settings that you've already done and go ahead and uh, proceed. Uh, so right now there's not really nothing to synchronize. Uh, I don't know what the, I think that's just synchronizing the log file or something along those lines. Uh, but you can see the task is made. You have an overview. Uh, uh, you have an overview of your settings. You can actually pause syncing manually if you don't want to use the automatic syncing or if you need to pause it outside of your normal uh, pause hours. For example, if you have a day off or something along those lines, you can do that. Uh, you can actually unlink it to to delete this local synchronization uh, from your Synology uh, device too. Uh, you can see the where it's being synchronized to. Uh, you can actually get to your schedule. So if you want to decide at first you don't want to schedule, then decide later on you want to edit your schedule or make a schedule. You can easily do that from here. So a lot of your settings aren't set in stone. Some of them are like the data encryption key that will encrypt the data. So you, uh, like you're getting on the portals. Uh, you won't be able to access it. That is something you can't change. You'd have to completely remake. Uh, but a lot of the settings you can change. Like you can still enable server-side encry uh, encryption after the fact, or even change the storage class with your S3 uh, settings. You can do some of that stuff after the fact, but some settings you don't need to. Uh, since this is for archive, I'm gonna set this to do 600 seconds on a polling period. So it's only gonna check my folder once every 600 seconds. That'll kind of minimize the performance impact of this uh, task simply because it doesn't need to be polling every 10 seconds for stuff that I might only put in there once a day, if that. Uh, I could easily make that, you know, 6,000 seconds uh, and do it, you know, once every 100 minutes, you know, or you know, so it's not something I'm gonna need activated all the time. Uh, so just keep that in mind, I just kind of bump that up just so it's not hitting my, or polling as often. Uh, this isn't a super data intensive task for it to poll, um, but I'm just, there's no reason for it to do it, you know, every 10 seconds out, you know, at all. So I'm just kind of bumping it up just for the sake of having it bumped up. You do have traffic control capabilities too. Keep in mind that this is measured in bytes, not bits, which your ISPs do uh, sell your data to you. Usually your data speed and advertise in megabits per second generally, or uh, if you're lucky, in gigabits per second. Uh, and this is measured in kilobytes per second. So just keep that in mind. Uh, one megabit, if you have like a 10 megabit uh, connection, that's um, 10,000 kilobits, which is roughly uh, um, about 10, 000, uh, 10 megabit would be a roughly about 1.25 uh, megabyte uh, per second connection. So just keep that in mind. Uh, on when you're setting this up. Also keep in mind that you have the connection speed uh, for a single connection. A single task might actually have more than one connection, so keep that in mind too. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and apply. Uh, actually, there's no sa sa savings, I don't think. Okay, I missed. Oh yeah, I saved, changed it to 600. 
Uh, anyways, um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. And you can go through and modify and add whatever other task you want to. After the fact, you can name this both based on uh, the task name, or you can actually look at it based on your service provider. So you can sort by Amazon S3, Dropbox, and OneDrive. If you have a, you know like 50 different connections and you have a big, huge, long list, you can easily sort through the cloud provider too to quickly find what you're looking for. So that's pretty much it for the Cloud Sync. It's a very simple tool, but it's a very powerful tool that has a lot of different options that let you control how you synchronize data between you and the cloud and have a lot of different options for encrypting that data if that's what you're wanting to do and still utilize the public cloud for offsite backup uh, in the worst case scenario of you losing your Synology device, even with having the disk redundancy uh, through a fire or something along, along, along those lines. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video informative. I hope it helped you in your setup process of the Synology Cloud Sync. If it did, make sure you like the video and consider subscribing. If you are a subscriber that hasn't done so already, check out that notification button, which will notify you when I release new videos. Uh, stay tuned for more great videos with Dr. Vulcan Tech and check out the links in the description below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask me on in the comments below or uh, hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, which you see throughout and through the banner below, or consider heading over to Patreon uh, to support me by becoming a uh, one of my patrons. Um, I greatly appreciate anyone that chooses to do so. And once again, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. And until next time, Zach out.